Hey everyone, it's Ryzen. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Well, if I sound a little different, it's because I added a compressor on my microphone. Settings, I added a filter basically. And I added a noise limiter as well, so I can't peek anymore. Although, I usually didn't peek anyway, but just in case. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you, if it sounds better to you, you know, we'll stick with it. Which it, I mean, it should. It should sound, you know, should have more pop to my voice. Well, yeah. I mean, the castle looks all right. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, where's the crystal? Oh, uh, somebody took it, of course. Oh, yeah, it's that girl again, apparently. Seems like it, yeah. I don't know. We don't know where Sid is, actually. I mean, then again, why is Cecil attacking the underworld anyway? I mean... Since Red Wings, I mean, he seemed fine. Uh, maybe, maybe she stole his airships or something. I don't know. Yeah, if only you uh, kept those tanks, huh? Oh well. Oh yeah, sealed cave. Who's coming with us? Bringing some guards with us? Are we going to get Dwarf A and Dwarf B? No, no, we're not going to do that. But yeah, it is from Luca's mom, the pendant. That's right. I mean, she's a JRPG princess. What did you expect? Actually, I really like Luca in this game. I plan to use her long term. She's quite good, actually. Not the best, but certainly one of the better characters. And I'd rather, you know, use as many of the new characters as I can. But anyway, now we're going to go ahead and uh, get some treasure. Yeah, monsters out of thin air. Yeah, they're called Idolans. I do want to buy a Crescent Axe for Luca. It's the only thing I care to buy here. Now, the nice thing about the Crescent Axe, it is one of the few axes that is one-handed. Uh, by the way, if you go in there, the developer's room is closed, and there's just a dancing um, dwarf there that I don't really care to show you. If you want to do it, you can do it, but I don't really care. Uh, none of this stuff is that interesting, but I figured I'd show you what they have. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and go up here, get a high potion. Suit of armor has a cockle ore. And 600 gil, I believe, is... I think it's this one? Yeah, I remembered. Oh, I hate this room. Get an iron shield, oh, which we can actually give to Luca. Yeah, we'll actually be able to use a shield because, well, it's a one-handed weapon. Don't get used to that. Most of Luca's weapons are indeed two-handed. I don't know if I explained. Uh... <sighs> there it is. Now, if you don't plan to use Rydia long-term like I do, uh, save the silver apple, but I, I, uh, I'm going to be using Rydia long term, so I'm just going to immediately give it to her. But anyway, um, uh, oh, nope, I want to go out to the west tower. Anyway, Rydia is basically like she was in FF4, minus her summons, so she's just basically a pure black mage, but she learns her spells much faster now. Which is very good. Uh, not as fast as like Palum did, but 
fast enough that, you know, it won't take her forever to get her tier three spells. I mean, she won't get them in this tale, but... Oh, no, I think I think it's where this Bacchus wine is. I think it's this one. Or, no, it's a bomb crank, sorry. But whatever. So that's pretty nice. And she's got good intellect. She's actually got decent speed, too, for a mage. Better than Palin. Oh, no, we gotta go this way. So yeah, Rydia is obviously awesome. She's one of the best characters in the game, as you might imagine. I mean, she was in original FF4, so same thing here, really. Just a little less versatile because of how long it takes for her to get her summons, but you can get some of the drop summons. In particular, the bomb summon and the uh, cockatrice summon are quite good if you can get them. I don't know if you can get bomb in this tale, but you can, I know you can get cockatrice. In fact, I did get the cockatrice summon in this tale when I was, you know, preparing the Let's Play, and it was awesome. Man, it's really good, but I probably won't get it again. As for Luca, she's basically a much better version of Sid. She's relatively she's much she's faster than him she has female exclusive equipment that's he does not have access to which is quite useful uh, her weapon draw is pretty good her equipment draw is very good and she has a long range attack in the form of big throw i did get that thing right i'm not paying attention here it's in here yeah i got it it was a cockalore and big throw can be powered up by the new moon as well which is very good Warrior's clothes? Huh? Who are those for? Ah, I wouldn't worry about it. No, no, we'll hold on to those for later. But yeah, it's pretty good stuff, actually. That uh, Luca has access to. She also has an Analyze ability, but it's just the uh, same thing as Libra. I never use it. She's got decent bands, too, Luca. So that's pretty nice. Overall, Luca's good, actually. <laughs> now, here it is. That's the last chest in here. Yeah, unlike Sid, that's just ridiculously slow. Uh, Luca can actually be made to be decently fast, and that's pretty good. Plus, she's got you know, good elemental protection and all that in the long run, so... Yeah, I like Luca a lot. I think she's one of the better characters. Of all the new characters added, she's probably one of the best ones. All right, we already bought that uh, Crescent Axe. Go in here and we'll get... Oh, I do need to change the moon phase. It's about to trigger on its own, though. As far as moon phase is concerned, yeah, we got the, the dolls. You remember these two? Well, there were several of them in FF4, but yeah. Uh, use either new moon or full moon for pretty much the entire tale. But yeah, it's Kalka and Verena. I guess Luca fixed them, and now they're here. Luca is correct. Go to Tamra first. Yep, I was waiting for that. I definitely don't want it to be a waxing moon. New moon makes a uh, big throw better, and it also makes uh, the dolls' abilities better. Uh, dance and jive. As far as the dolls are concerned, oh yeah, I can give that warrior clothes to... Uh, and I can give the leather cap to him as well, because, well, we have it from Rydia and we can pass it down. But yeah, the dolls are weird characters. Oh, I want to put them both in the back row. They are front row characters, kind of, with their melee attacks, but they have other abilities. They're weird. Basically, they're customizable with their clothes, which have different stat bonuses on them. 
So the warrior's clothes basically makes you more physically oriented. Uh, there's also other clothes that make you, you know, faster or give you more intellect or spirit for their special ability. Now, as far as the dolls are concerned themselves, I'll just tell you right now, Kalka is terrible. Uh, he is easily the worst character in the game. And that just has to do with the fact that Jive is just so god-awful. And anything he can do, Brina does significantly better. And there's quite literally nobody that's worse than Kalka. <laughs> so, yeah, um... Kalka sucks. I mean, he's just horrible, unfortunately. He can be useful. I mean, I did force myself to use him in a final party once because I tested everybody, but yeah, he's definitely the worst of them all, and it's not really close. Brina can actually be quite good because she has uh, the dance ability, and, well, the dance ability is interesting. Let's go ahead and make a save here. Yeah, it's my test file. Save right here. Let's go ahead and get into battle so I can demonstrate the doll's abilities. If I can. Can I get into battle? Thank you. This is not a good example. Let's just run. Actually, no, this example might work just fine, actually. So yeah, we got dance and well, I'll show you what Big Throw does, but here's Jive. Big Throw's not gonna work here. Ooh, haste dance right off the bat. Yeah, so that's what dance does. It does either a random buff or a healing ability. Whatever, dude. Yeah, so that's the problem with Kalka. Basically, all those unique abilities that enemies use on you, like special abilities like Frost Breath, um, I think Lightning. Uh, he can even use uh, the thing that the, the Blood Feast, I think it is. Yeah, he can use like any of those or he can use Curse. It's completely random. They're all horrible. I mean, so many of those special abilities that enemies use on you actually rely on... HP and Kalka has terrible HP, so yeah, it's a problem. And a lot of times he'll just use something useless that will, you know, heal you. There's there's basically no useless dance, and that's why dance is so much better. Uh, the worst thing that can happen with dance is a wasted raise on everybody or a wasted Asuna because nobody has a status element or nobody's dead. And even those abilities can be useful when you need them to be useful, right? So there's literally nothing useless about dance. On a rare occasion, something that could be useful just will happen to not be useful. And that's basically it as far as dance is concerned, as far as a negative. So even when Brina can't do anything physically, she can still contribute to the party in ways that Where's the Cockalore? Oh, there it is. That Kalka simply cannot. I mean, Jive is just... Man, it's so awful. It's got to be the worst ability in the game. It's certainly one of them. And unfortunately, he just doesn't have any other really op good options. Uh, oh, no, it's uh, the Cockalore in here. Now I want to go into the weapon shop. Right there for a Phoenix Down. We can go through to a secret passage to the armor shop. And I think it's in the armor, if I'm not mistaken. Cockalore. Yeah, that's Cockalore number seven. We want a shop now. Start with the two daggers. I want to buy two daggers, but I do not want to equip them on the twins. Ooh. How much money do I have? Not a lot. I want to buy a... Wizard hat. K. 
can I afford it? Yes, barely. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, I want to buy a silver armlet for Brina. If I couldn't afford it, I would have gone outside and fought a few battles. Wizard's hat to boost some intellect there for Rydia. How much is that booster? I don't remember. 22. I think it's 25. I think it's 3. Yeah. And then go ahead and give the feathered cap to you. Give the silver armlet. I don't want to buy one for Kalka because we'll find one. And Kalka's just significantly worse, frankly. So I really don't care to optimize him. Yeah, that's it. Now we want to fly over to... I don't even think we're going to get into the dungeon. <laughs> that's all right. Let's go fly over to the forge now. I guess we can use some bands outside the, uh, the dungeon, because I'm going to need to get some money for uh, using the inn to reset the moon phase. Yeah, we can do that. Let's see, where are we going here? Uh, right, the uh, fireplace. There has a, there's a cockalore in there. Should be number eight, yeah, there we go. East of this should be a high potion. Trust me, it was a high potion. I just went through it quickly. And then upstairs, we can check the bookshelf for an angel's clothes that I want to give to Brina. Let's see, let's take a look at her stats now. I think it gives her some spirit or intellect or something. Yeah, it gives her some spirit, okay. Which will help her uh, healing with her um, her dance ability. Yeah, dance is just really good. Yeah, I actually like Brina a lot. I was kind of shocked how good Brina is if you actually commit to her. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's on the lower tier. She's at the lower end, but... She's very viable and can contribute to uh, any real party, really. Anyway, we want to make a dancing dagger. We get a dagger and three cockle oars, and we make a dancing dagger. And I want to make two of those. There is an axe I would like to make as well, but we don't have enough cockle ore for that. Pretty much a no-brainer. Make the two dancing daggers. It makes the uh, the dolls useful. Now, if you want to just not use the dolls and you want to kill them off so Rydia and Luca get more experience, I mean, yeah, you can do that. Uh, I don't recommend that because L Luca and Rydia will cap their levels just fine uh, without even with the dolls sticking around getting experience. So don't worry about it. Get a dancing dagger. Dancing Dagger. I would not get one for Rydia. She doesn't need it. Now, the Sylph Cave is where we're going next. It is optional. In fact, it's one of the only optional areas. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so let's uh, use a band here. We'll start with uh, Rydia Black Magic and Luca Attack. Go ahead and do that. Let's see, and then we can also use Kalka and Brina, which is Jive and Dance. Lightning Brain Buster, which is fantastic. It's really good. Deals a lot of damage to a single target. It'll be quite useful from time to time. But also we got Kalka and Brina, which is okay if you, you know, care. Actually, it is decent. Um, I don't tend to use it because I prefer to use them on... I prefer to have Brina ready to dance at all times, but you know, it's something to consider. So yeah, I'll just show you where we're going. We're going to the Sylph Cave, which is up here. Right here. But I'm going to need to rest up. And let's go ahead and learn that last band. And I want to make it a new moon because a new moon will make dance more powerful and big throw more powerful. Yeah, I prefer a new moon, but you could go either way, really. Now we got some gargoyles. I don't really care about that, but I do want to go ahead and use. What did I have to use? 
Uh, Luca, analyze. Uh, and then I think it's jive and dance, yes. Our first triple band. Unless it was big throw. I don't think so, though. No, it's, it's analyze. This one's not very useful. It, 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 it doesn't do enough damage for how much you're putting into it. Okay, so I'm gonna make the moon phase a new moon, and then next time we'll we'll go to the self cave. So yeah, this is Ryzen. Thanks for watching. Take care.